Well, this is a very serious topic. It's about discipleship, but not about discipleship in the way we're used to thinking about discipleship, as in learning to follow Jesus more closely. We can actually be discipled in learning to follow Satan more closely. Satan is trying to disciple us. There's no better resource on how this works than C.S. Lewis screw tape letters and, of course, the Bible. In this book, C.S. Lewis talks about how one older demon is actually discipling a younger demon. I don't recall him ever using that word, but that's exactly the process that he's explaining. It's a discipleship process. Not only is an older demon discipling a younger demon, but the younger demon then is discipling people who then disciple other people, passing along the discipleship just like Jesus did. You look at Jesus' disciples, they were disciples who made more disciples. There's multiplication involved. There's replication involved. Satan does the very same thing. He is not a moron. Satan can look at the very technique that God is using and manipulate that and use that against the kingdom of God. To, to look at how God uses multiplication and discipling and say, well, why don't I do that? It's what Satan's been doing from the very beginning. We talked about that in a previous video that I'm going to put up here on the screen. When we disciple people, we not only disciple them in how to read the Word of God and understand and live the Word of God, we disciple people in how to pray. We want to teach people to pray as Jesus prayed. What if Satan used prayer itself as one more way to disciple us in the ways of the kingdom of darkness? There's examples of this in screw tape letters where the demons are discipling this man in prayer to distract him, to get him to be self-focused and self-centered. It's exactly what we find in Luke 18 when Jesus tells the parable of the tax collector and the Pharisee. And whenever he starts a story like that in their world, everyone around knows who the good guy's gonna be and who the bad guy's gonna be. See, today we have like negative connotations for Pharisees. and their day, the Pharisees were like the religious elite, the obedient of the most obedient, the most holy of holy people. So when you say you got a Pharisee, good guy, tax collector, bad guy, because tax collector was the one extorting the people for money to give to their foreign oppressors, the Romans. So you already know who the good guy's supposed to be and who the bad guy's supposed to be. But when you listen to them pray, you get to know their hearts. You get this Pharisee who begins to pray that it literally says that the NIV misses this, but it says he begun to pray thus about himself. I, 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 I thank you that I am not like him. I give this, I do that. He's taken one of the most holy things a human being can do, one of the most intimate things is talk to our creator and turn it all into something about himself. Then you listen to the tax collector's prayer and it's, woe is me, I'm just a ruined person, I'm a sinner. He sees himself in light of reality, unlike this Pharisee. So what are a couple lessons that we can learn in how the devil disciples us even when we pray? The first way to pray satanically is to take a conversation that is all about God and make it about you. It's to take a conversation that's all about other people. Lord, please bless other people. Please heal other people. Can you help take care of my neighbor? A conversation with God about other people and make it about yourself. If you want to pray satanically, make your prayers about yourself. The devil could care less. In fact, the devil would encourage you to pray if your prayers sound like that. I, 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 we know exactly who this Pharisee has in mind. It's himself. I'm not like other men. I don't do things like other people. I'm the best. It's all about me. The second way to pray satanically is to pray in a way that is comparative. This Pharisee is like, I'm glad I'm not like this other guy. I'm glad I'm not like these people because I'm exceptional. I'm the best. He's comparing, as we all are tempted to do, the best version of ourselves with the worst version of someone else. And both of those are actually made up. Neither one of those are reality. We make up negativity about others and make up positivity about ourselves. And we twist the truth, which is what Satan wants us to do. And we're doing it while we pray. This is satanic praying. This is devil discipleship 101. The third way to pray satanically is to make it all about what you are doing and what you have done rather than what God is doing and what God has done. Because again, it makes it about you. And you fail to notice that God is doing all these amazing things. Like God is literally doing miraculous things all around you. And all you can think to say is, I did this and I did that. When we talk about prayer, we're talking about spiritual warfare. And what we normally mean by that is we're saying we are doing battle with Satan when we talk to God. When we, when we approach the throne of grace with confidence and we pray to God and we pray continually, as the Bible says to do, we are attacking the realms of darkness. Well, not always. Yes. Prayer is always spiritual warfare. 
But that does not always mean that the kingdom is winning when you pray. Because if Satan can disciple you in his way of praying, then prayer, yes, is still spiritual warfare, but only in the other direction. You are fighting for his kingdom rather than for God's kingdom, all in the name of doing something good and holy and righteous. Very twisted, very deceitful and deceptive. It is the way of Satan, and he is absolutely discipling people in how to pray. So be on the lookout for this. Listen to your prayers. Think about what comes to mind when you pray and assess that and say, is this really about me or is it about God? Because maybe you've been discipled by the wrong person. In Matthew chapter 6, verses 5 through 14, Jesus teaches on the Sermon on the Mount about prayer, and he says a couple really important things. The first thing is, he says, don't be like the hypocrites. He says they love to stand out in public, and they love to be seen by others. In their world, the hypocrites were play actors. It would be one actor who would go out on stage, and he would play various roles, man and woman alike. This one guy would play roles of children and women and and men, and they would change masks. You see these old Greek tragedy masks, like this one. And they would put these things on, same person playing different roles. He's like, don't be like that. Don't be two-faced when you come and talk to God. You have to be transparent. You have to be genuine. You have to be yourself. Don't be acting like you're someone who you're not because God sees everything. And don't go about it in a way that you're doing it for other people because, once again, it makes something that's all about God about something or someone else. And when you do that, it really is not even about the other people. It's all about you. But then he says, lastly, don't go on babbling and babbling and babbling, on and on and on, droning on and on. It's like you don't know how to land the prayer plane. It's as if you think that by many words you might convince God. God is not convinced by our many words. That is dis devil discipleship 101. Make it about many words. Make it about manipulating the divine. It's like magical prayer incantations. Like in Harry Potter when they're trying to do spells. And if you don't say the words just exactly right, then the, the, the magical powerful thing won't happen like it's supposed to happen. Some people have a prayer attitude or belief that the words have to be said just right. Like, for instance... If you don't end your prayer and in Jesus' name, amen, it wasn't a valid prayer. Like, God won't really do that. Why? Because Jesus said, if you pray for anything in my name. But he did not mean by that to say at the end of your prayer, in Jesus' name, amen. It's one more Satan deceptive um, prayer discipling practice to get you to think that if all you say is at the end, you said in Jesus' name, amen, that you're good because that, that does not make it in Jesus' name. What makes it in Jesus' name is that you are praying with things that are aligned with Jesus. That's, that's doing it in his name. Like if, if you came to me and you said, Matt, I did something in your name. I'd be like, I sure hope I agree with that, right? That's what Jesus means when he says, do it in my name. He's not saying tack on a line at the end of your prayer and pray whatever you want. It'd be selfish and worldly and, and narcissistic and make it all about you. But as long as you tack on the end in Jesus' name, amen, then you're biblical because that's what I told you to do. Never meant it. That's the devil's deception. Don't buy into it. It's fine. I, I pray in Jesus' name, amen, at the end of my prayer. But what I mean by that is, Lord, I hope that all the things I'm saying are aligned with you, your kingdom, and purposes. There has to be humility involved. Prayer cannot be prideful. It cannot be made about ourselves. So don't let the devil disciple you in prayer. Don't let the devil disciple you in how you read the scriptures like we talked about in the last video. If you haven't seen that one, I'm throwing it up on the screen here at the very end. Check that one out next. Hope you have a great day.